Good morning, and welcome to the Sunderland Veterans Memorial and the Veterans Day Observance Ceremony. I would like to welcome everyone to this special event. Sunderland Elementary School students and staff, community members, Superintendent Dr. Lynn Carey, and of course, all the veterans in attendance. At various times during today's ceremony, the military will be given commands, so students, please do not be startled. We are going to begin our ceremony with a Pledge of Allegiance. Those who want to participate, please stand up straight and hold your hand over your heart. Group, attention. I pledge allegiance. Group, attention. Group, attention. Group, attention. Thank you. Originating as Armistice Day on November 11, 1919, the first anniversary of the end of World War I, Veterans Day is intended to honor and thank all military personnel who served our country or are serving our country, particularly the living veterans. Beginning in 1938, Veterans Day was recognized as a national holiday and is celebrated every year on November 11th. This year marks the ninth consecutive time for Sunderland Elementary School students to participate in the Veterans Day Observance Ceremony. The guiding force behind this annual event is to help our Sunderland school children recognize the importance of Veterans Day, which is to celebrate and honor America's veterans. In fact, we have staff members and students at Sunderland Elementary School whose family members and loved ones are currently serving our nation in this capacity. And although some may be many miles away, we can rest assured that this event brings them closer to home, even if it is just in spirit. Sunderland resident and Vietnam era veteran Michael Ahern will now read Massachusetts Governor Baker's Veterans Day Proclamation. Following the reading of the proclamation, retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Dan Van Dalsen, who is the chair of the Veterans Memorial Oversight Committee in Sunderland, will introduce our guests who are volunteering their time for this very special event. Mr. Michael Hearn, welcome. Since the Commonwealth's colonial days, thousands of men and women have served our country in defense of freedom and liberty. On November 11, 1918, the armistice was signed in the forest of Campaign by the Allied Nations and Germany, ending World War I, the war to end all wars. After four years of conflict, and since that day, every November, People from around the nation have gathered to honor our veterans. There are approximately 388,000 veterans living in Massachusetts. Today we are reminded of the great sacrifices and contributions our veterans have made to our country. We honor and salute those who served their country throughout the generations with honor, patriotism, and courage. It is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who served their country so that their dedication and sacrifice serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. Therefore, I, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim November 11, 2017 to be Veterans Day and urge all citizens of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate in its observance. Given at the Executive Chamber in Boston this first day of November in the year 2017, 
and of the independence of the United States of America, the 241st. By His Excellency Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth, Karen Polito, Lieutenant Governor of the Commonwealth, William Francis Calvin, Secretary of the Commonwealth. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to quickly introduce the military uh, members who are here today, and I will introduce the cadets later. I'm uh, introducing by alphabetical order of the department, so I'll begin with the Air Force. Our guest speaker today is Lieutenant Colonel Diane Birch. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Mark Rubert is here from the uh, Air Force ROTC Detachment at the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. Major Bradley Podliska is also from UMass. Tech Sergeant Esquerdo, Janet Esquerdo is from is uh, part of the Honor Guard at Westover Air Base in Chicopee as is Tech Sergeant Matthew Tosek, uh, Staff Sergeant Jonathan Texera, and um, Zandri Staff Sergeant Zandria Bundy. Staff Sergeant Nicholas Williams is from the uh, University of, at uh, Amherst. In the Army, there is Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Manger, who is the uh, troop commander today. He's from the Army ROTC at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Captain Antoine Brodnex is from the 302nd Maneuver Enhancement Brigade at Westover. Captain Mary Jo Skoran is also from the 302nd. Master Sergeant John Diggles is from Army ROTC at the University at Amherst. And from the Marine Corps, we have Major Michael Schultz, who is a commander out at uh, uh, Marine Detachment, uh, Marine Air Support Squadron 6 at Westover. Gunnery Sergeant Candido Didion, who is from uh, Marine Wing Support Squadron 472 at Westover. Sergeant Joseph Vega, also from the uh, Support Squadron 472. Sergeant Jacob Zimmerman and Corporal Jalen Campbell, also from uh, the uh, Squadron 472. We have a special guest. I haven't seen him here yet, but he did say he's coming. Mr. Bennett Walsh will be here from the uh, Soldiers' Home representing the Massachusetts Department of Veterans Affairs. So please help me welcome all these uh, fine people to the ceremony. Squadron Operations Officer at Westover Air Reserve Base in Chicopee, Mass. As Operations Officer, she assists the Force Support Squadron Commander in overseeing the manpower, personnel, and service activities for some 2,500 personnel at Westover. She is also responsible for organizing, training, and equipping all airmen assigned to the Force Support Squadron. Lieutenant Colonel Birch received her commission from the United States Air Force Academy in 1998. She has been in the military for 19 years and has served in both an active duty and a reserve capacity. As a career personnel officer, Lieutenant Colonel Birch has served as a director of equal opportunity, as military and personnel flight commander, and as an exercise planner in the Inspector General's office. She just completed a one-year deployment to al Udeed Air Base in Qatar in support of Operations Inherent Resolve, Resolute Support, and Freedom Sentinel. Prior to her current Operations Officer position, Lieutenant Colonel Birch was the Director of the Air Expeditionary Force Operations at al Udeed Air Base in Qatar. As the Chief 
of Air Expeditionary Force Operations. She worked as part of the directorate at the Combined Air Operations Center. In this capacity, she oversaw the manpower, accountability, casualty, mortuary, lodging, services, and food operations for more than 16,000 airmen assigned to the United States Air Force's Central Command. Colonel Birch's awards and decorations include the Meritorious Service Medal with one Oak Leaf Cluster, the Air Force Commendation Medal, and the Air Force Achievement Medal. Please join me in welcoming Colonel Birch as this year's guest speaker. Wow, thank you so much for that introduction um, and for the flyover. I appreciate that. <laughs> so, good morning. Before I begin, first I'd like to just thank Mr. Van, uh, Dan Van Delsen and Mr. Ben Barshevsky just for inviting me here today to be with you. I'm honored to be with you and thank you for the invitation to share in this ceremony. So some of you in the audience today might be wondering what exactly is Veterans Day? And you heard um, a couple people talk about it. So first, but the first Veterans Day was actually celebrated 98 years ago on November 11th, 1919. It was originally called Armistice Day and it marked the end of World War I. It became a national holiday in 1938 and has been celebrated annually ever since. It is a day when our nation comes together to give thanks to the veterans who have served, who have served their country during both times of war and during times of peace. But what exactly is a veteran? At the most basic level, a veteran is someone who has served in the military. Veterans can be old or young, male or female, and they come from all walks of life. But they all have one thing in common. Each and every one of them took an oath to defend our country and keep our citizens safe. In fact, a veteran would give up their own life to protect the freedoms that you guys enjoy every day, like playing your Xbox or walking to the store with a friend if you're like my kids. They are like our nation's secret force of superheroes. They do their job to help you, and they ask very little in return. Last year, I had the honor of spending Veterans Day surrounded by veterans. As, they, as you just heard, I returned from the Middle East, where well, I just returned from the Middle East, where I spent a year deployed with some of the finest people you will ever meet. They willingly left their families and friends to travel halfway around the world to keep you safe. They worked through the night and the holidays, through sandstorms and extreme heat. And I mean extreme heat, like 137 degrees to be exact. All to make sure that you could sleep safely in your beds and enjoy the freedoms that you have. We ask the unimaginable of these people and they always step up and deliver. They do not question, they act because they know it's the right thing to do. They are some of the most interesting people you will ever meet and they can tell amazing stories about what they have done. So now I know you want to meet a veteran, so where can you find one? Well, they're not always easy to find. Only 7% of all the people in our nation have served in the military. That means if everyone here represented the entire United States, I'm guessing there's, a, I don't know how many people, let's say 250 people, only 17 of us would be veterans. That's not very many. So how can you tell if someone is a veteran? Well, to be honest, you can't. As I said before, it's windy, hold on a second. They could be old or young or male or female, and, but sometimes they might be wearing a hat or maybe a flag pin, but you would have to be very observant to spot that. Remember, your superheroes don't always like to reveal their true identity. So the best way to find a veteran is to ask. Ask your parents, ask your neighbors. You may find out that they themselves are veterans, or maybe they can tell you who is one. Once you find a veteran, once you find that person, ask them what they've done and ask them to tell you about it. Veterans Day is all about expressing thankfulness. There are so many ways that we can do this. You can have large assemblies like what we're doing today, you can send cards and care packages to troops overseas. 
I always loved getting cards from school children, and once I even received over 300 pounds of candy to share with my friends. That is a lot of candy. And you could also just visit with a veteran and take time to hear some of their stories. Or you could show your thanks by doing some type of community service. You can become your community's own superhero. For me, and maybe some of the other veterans here, a good way to show thankfulness is by doing something kind for my children and family. While it is very difficult to leave your family to go away, I think it is even more difficult to be the one left behind. The families of veterans sacrifice so much, and even the littlest kindness can mean the world. You can include their son or daughter of a veteran in a recess game, bring their family a meal, or just say thank you. Recognizing their sacrifices as well is an amazing way to show our thanks. So this Saturday, November 11th, take time to recognize the airmen, soldiers, sailors, marines, and coast guardsmen that walk among us today. Whether they were fighting from home or serving abroad, they all deserve our thanks. They protect our freedom. There is no way we can ever repay them for the sacrifices they made but we can show them how thankful we are. So in closing, I'd like for any veterans or family members of the veterans in the audience to raise their hand. Now, I'd like for everyone to join me in a round of applause to thank the veterans and these family members for the sacrifices they've made for us and for protecting our freedom. Thank you. At this time, please direct your attention to the flagpole, where the Westover Honor Guard will be raising the flag to half-staff. While Veterans Day is a tribute to America's living veterans and is more of a celebration than a solemn remembrance, it is always appropriate to include a moment of respect for those who gave their lives for our country. One way we show respect is to fly our flag at half-staff in memory of an important person who has died. When a person in the armed forces has died while serving our country, the song Taps is also played in their memory. The Westover Honor Guard will now lower the flag to half staff while Taps is played by Frontier Regional Band students Ella Dean and Phelan Kosky. It is appropriate to remain still and quiet during this portion of the ceremony. Attention.
Great. We will now observe one moment of silence. Thank you. Under the direction of one of our Sunderland parents, Jessica Corwin, students will now sing My Country Tis of Thee. Students in grades one through four will sing the first verse, and then grades five and six will join in along with everyone else, and we will sing the first verse once again. to introduce the uh, Army cadets who will be performing the uh, flag folding ceremony for you. This is the Army Color Guard from the University of Massachusetts. There's Cadet Victoria Acosta, Cadet Eric Anderson, Cadet Jack Cudmore, Cadet James Harding, Cadet John Laverne, Cadet Brenda McLaughlin, Cadet Nicole Patel and Cadet Sierra Coyle.
Okay, Miss Janet Connolly is going to read a uh, little excerpt on the flag for you. Um, this is a Department of Defense approved reading. For more than 200 years, the American flag has been the symbol of our nation's unity, as well as a source of pride and inspiration for millions of citizens. Born on June 14, 1777, the Second Continental Congress determined that the flag of the United States be 13 stripes alternating between seven red, six white, and that the Union be 13 stars, white in a blue field representing a new constellation. Between 1777 and 1960, the shape and design of the flag evolved into the flag presented before you today. The 13 horizontal stripes represent the original 13 colonies, while the stars represent the 50 states of the Union. The colors of the flag are symbolic as well. Red symbolizes hardiness and valor. White signifies purity and innocence, and blue represents vigilance, perseverance, and justice. Traditionally, a symbol of liberty, the American flag has carried the message of freedom and inspired Americans both at home and abroad. In 1814, Francis Scott Key was so moved at seeing the stars and stripes waving after the British shelling of Baltimore's Fort McHenry that he wrote the words to the Star Spangled Banner. In 1892, the flag inspired Francis Bellamy to write the Pledge of Allegiance, our most famous flag salute and patriotic oath. In July 1969, the American flag was flown in space when Neil Armstrong planted it on the surface of the moon. Today, our flag flies on constellations of Air Force satellites that circle our globe and on the fin flash of our aircraft in harm's way in every corner of the world. Indeed, it flies in the heart of every soldier, sailor, airman, and marine who serves our great nation. The sun never sets on the United States military, nor on the flag we so proudly cherish. Since 1776, no generation of Americans has been spared the responsibility of defending freedom. Today's soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines remain committed to preserving the freedom that others want for us for generations to come. By displaying the flag and giving it a distinctive fold, we show respect to the flag and express our gratitude to those individuals who fought and who continue to fight for freedom at home and abroad. Since the dawn of the 20th century, United States service men and women have proudly flown the flag in every major conflict on land and skies around the world. It is their responsibility, our responsibility, to continue to protect and preserve the rights, the privileges, and the freedoms that we as Americans enjoy today. The United States flag represents who we are. It stands for the freedom we all share 
and the pride and patriotism we feel for our country. We cherish its legacy as a beacon of hope to one and all, and long may it wave. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Conley. Sixth grade students Josh Dion and Theo Sargent will now read a Veterans Day poem. On Veterans Day, we honor all who answer to the service. Soldiers young, soldiers old, fought for freedom, brave and bold. Some have lived, while others died. All of them deserve our pride. We proud of all the soldiers who kept thinking of red, white. They fought for us in all our rights. They fought through many days and nights. And though we may not know each name, we thank all veterans just the same. Excellent job, young men. Thank you. We will now conclude our ceremony with the song, This Land is Your Land. guests, Colonel Birch, the service men and women who helped to make this recognition ceremony so special. We appreciate all that you do for your communities and your country. As always, you are cordially invited back to our school to visit our classrooms and eat lunch with our students. It is baked potato day at Sunderland Elementary School. <laughs> Boys and girls, awesome. please listen to your homeroom teacher as we get ready to head back to the school. Thank you, everyone.